Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I've been getting some interesting orders lately for metal pick guards as usual, um, but in unusual metals. So a couple brass ones that's been a, become a popular one lately. And then uh, this is for an Explorer. Obviously we've got back plate, pick guard and um, truss rod cover. This guy is stainless, stainless steel. So it's, it's heavier. We've put an interesting brushing pattern in it here and the client, the, the customer wants it a little brighter. So we've also done some beveling on it. I'll show you guys how I did that. Very difficult actually and time consuming with stainless. Um, but yeah, countersunk, beveled, ready to go. Different hole size than usual for this guy because it's a custom order. Only thing we'll have to do is, yeah, brighten this up, make this brushing look brighter. And this is a balancing act on this particular one because you know, if you brighten it up too much, it's going to look polished. We're looking for a brush finish, but a bright brush finish, brighter than what we've got here. Um, so what we're going to use is a couple of Jeskar products, Jeskar Paste 16 and 2L. We're going to test them out on the back of this because that's against the guitar. So that's not a problem. It doesn't really matter how that looks, but we're going to see how much they brighten it up. And then we'll use the appropriate thing, probably a low abrasive pad to do this on the front. We'll test it on the back first, try it on the front. These are available if you're looking for them through Solo Music Gear. Uh, you can get them there. As most of you already know, I have an affiliate link in the description, the Solo, the Solo Music Gear link down there. Um, if you buy something through there, helps me out. And then these are available on Amazon. You can find them in the Amazon link in the description if you want. So that's enough talking, I think. Let's get to work on finishing this up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like and I'll get it shipped off to the guy who bought it. Let's get after it. So before we play around with the finish on this, let's jump back in time a little bit and I can show you a bit about how this was made. First off, this thing was cut on a water jet cutter. That's You need something like that to be able to cut stainless steel. It's a very hard material, so that's one of the few things that does a decent job. This piece came with a cover on it. You can see a plastic sheet, so it's it's got that white cover, which is nice. And what we're doing here is our countersinking and beveling work. So I'm starting with the countersinking. Uh, for this, you'll need a drill press. Well, you could do it with a hand drill, but for stainless steel, you pretty much need a drill press. And for stainless steel, you need a specific type of countersinking bit. So I've, you need to have one of these ones that's got a couple holes in it that basically slices off the metal. And that's what we're using here, a really high quality countersinking bit. Now, when you're doing a softer material, it's not such a big deal. Uh, wood obviously not that difficult and uh, softer metals you don't necessarily need something quite like this but for stainless you do you can set a depth if you want to make it very consistent but it's actually quite easy on these harder metals to get a very consistent uh, depth you can just feel it so that's what I'm doing here we're getting all of the screw holes countersunk um, not the larger hole of course because that's for something else I believe it's a kill switch that's going in there but uh, all the screw holes need to be done. And then we'll move on to the beveling, which is a long and challenging process on this. The beveling job here, you need something with a, a metal backing like I've got on this little tool. And this is specifically, um, the, the sandpaper we've got on here is, is for metal. So that's helpful. I also needed something small like this because I need to have control over it. And so this is how I started the process, and this ended up being a very, very long process, but um, this is how I started the beveling work, and then I spent a whole bunch of time, more than I care to talk about, um, with a file, kind of honing it in, making sure that it was nice and even and shiny, and all of that good stuff. But to begin with, a power tool makes a huge difference here. Putting a bevel into stainless takes a very, very long time because of how hard it is, so power tools help. Now, one other thing I should mention on this, this particular guard, just like a normal uh, Explorer guard, only has certain areas that are beveled, so the areas around the pickups and right next to the neck are not, and the rest are. I also beveled the cover for the truss rod, but not the back plate. It didn't need it, and the customer didn't want that one done. So, uh, there we go. I spent <laughs> a ton of time on it, and eventually we ended up with basically a 45 degree bevel um, that was done mostly on this machine and then just kind of tuned up by hand. So that basically finishes up the manufacturing process as it were. That's, you know, how we cut this thing and, and get it all set up and get the bevels in. 
And uh, with that said, let's move back to the finishing process and make sure you stick around through that because we will interject again to show you how we work on thinner brass pick guards. All right, back to the, uh, back to the finishing. Let's go. We've got two different types of paste here. One is the 2L paste that's a little harsher. Stuff's great for, you know what, it's great for a lot of stuff actually. It's great for frets. It's actually great for buffing up uh, the back of a, a neck on a guitar to, to make it not perfectly glossy, but, uh, but nice and smooth. And then this is our finer stuff, the Jeskar Paste 16. And you'll be able to tell that looks more like your standard metal polish. So we've got a couple different options here for how we approach this. But the first thing I'm gonna do to preserve our graining pattern is I'm gonna use this on the back with the 2L. I'm gonna put something down to avoid scratching it. Now, stainless steel isn't exactly easy to scratch. It's really bloody hard, but uh, you know, we still don't want to risk it too much if we can avoid it. So let's give that a try. You know what? This is gonna be unnecessarily big for what I'm trying to do here. So what I often do with these pads is I just cut them in half. And that way I've got one, at least in this case, for each of these products. And this is actually a quarter of a pad each now. I've already cut that one in half. So let's give this a try with the 2L paste. Let's get a little on here. And we'll just try this out gently on the back. So if I do that, being careful to be in a straight line, you can see that it turns black. That's how you know it is polishing. Now I'm gonna need to wipe it off obviously, but what I wanna avoid is polishing it a bunch more when I wipe it off. That's part of why I'm using that pad. I don't want just a really, really shiny surface here. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so that brightened things up a little bit. Now, we're gonna try next to it the other one. We'll test those out, and then we might try using the other one, the 16, on top of the 2L once I've compared the two. These are unfortunately a bit cold. It's kind of chilly here. And they were in my garage. So I expect that that's going to be a little brighter. And you know, they're actually fairly similar. Okay, and then finally, we will try the 16 on the 2L area and see if doubling up has any real impact here. Pretty minor. Okay, so you can see hopefully, let me come around there. You can see how those two streaks have been cleaned up and brightened up, right? So that's what we're gonna do now on the front, but in the opposite direction, because we've been asked to green it this way. So I'm going to use the 2L, I'm gonna put the 16 away, and I'm gonna use the same pad I used for the 2L before, and we're gonna see what we can do. Now when you're doing something like this, without a whole bunch of tools to help you accomplish it, the important part is making sure your lines are straight. And that's where things get a little complicated because you don't want a bunch of waviness and whatnot. This, honestly, I've been <laughs> doing on various items for a very long time, so kind of got some practice on it, luckily. But I like to work directly away from myself because if I go side to side, I tend to put a curve in things, do a little banana pattern. But if I'm pushing in a straight line away from myself and I've got these lines kind of paralleled up, I tend to find that a lot easier. Now I could use a buffer for this, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to create a situation where this thing looks glossy. So let's see how this works. If it looks like it's going to need a heavier, a heavier touch, so to speak, what I'll do is I'll just change to a more abrasive pad to kind of get those lines ingrained in there a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay, it's working. Get a little bit more of the piece spread out here so I can work with it. You gotta move over a little bit at a time, as you'll see me doing here. Not like work your way along because then you'll get a zigzag pattern. So you work, just do a little bit at a time. All right, let's see how we did. There we go. That's looking that's looking pretty shiny now. Let's see how it compares to the other side. Yeah, with the green pattern. That's looking pretty good. Definitely shinier than the old one. Alrighty, so I'm going to do the, this on the other two, and then we'll take another look at this. Well, this seems like as good a time as any to interject again with some other footage. So, here I am working on a completely different type of metal and a much softer one. This is brass, and I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm countersinking this. You'll see this is going a fair bit quicker. This is also a thinner guard, alright? The stainless steel, um, we were going with the thicker option because we needed the bevels and everything, but... To do that on brass gets very, very expensive. Thicker pieces of brass are quite pricey. So what I've found is this thickness, which is just slightly thinner than your typical uh, plastic pick guard, works really well. And it allows us to you know, have enough rigidity and everything to support anything that needs to be loaded into it. And it also looks great, and it keeps it pretty light. So... I'm using the same bit here to countersink. Don't necessarily need to, like I said. Something like a 90 degree V bit for a router would work just fine for this. Uh, there are other options as well. But if you've got one like this, uh, then there's really no reason not to use it. And brass is soft enough that it won't dull this bit. So I should be able to use this thing on brass kind of in perpetuity. And then if I spend a bunch of time working on stainless with it, I'll probably have to replace it at some point. For this one, we're not doing a full bevel. Um, we can do a full bevel on the side of brass, of course. It's a lot quicker. But what I tend to think works really well is basically burnishing it. So I do this all with the cover still on. You can see there's a protective layer on there. It's kind of bluish. And that's the bevel that we get. The reason I leave the bluish cover on there is I don't want any little stray pieces of metal creating swirl marks. If you look closely at the cover around the holes, you can see those swirl marks. And if I had left the cover, or if I had taken it off rather, that would have been a swirl mark right in the metal that I would have had to fix. Um, this stuff comes with a nice finish on it. So I leave the cover on and I do the same when I'm doing the burnishing process here. So. What I'm doing here is I'm basically pressing down the edge of the metal, and I'm pushing quite hard when I do this. Um, so you can see, even though this is metal and, and has some thickness to it, it's flexing a little bit, but I'm pushing hard, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of repetition over the areas, and pushing that metal edge right down in there to give it kind of a micro bevel type thing, and also make sure that it isn't sharp, because a water jet can sharpen it, and uh, it can leave a burr that, that could potentially cut somebody. So we're careful about that, of course. I go over this a bunch of times. I can tell that it's uh, it's sorted out when I basically burnish the cover right off the edge and start to see a very shiny metal gleam there. Once I'm done the burnishing process, which you know doesn't take nearly as long as beveling the stainless, but does take a while because of how much I have to go over it. Once I'm done that, then I can basically inspect this thing. And to do that, I have to pull the cover off. So that's what we're going to do now take a look at how this thing looks pretty nice to me I know people like tape pulls and stuff uh, this is my version and I am fond of it I did have one of these a while ago that had a line right through the middle when I pulled the cover so I keep it on there as long as I can to make sure it's protected and then I just really hope that that there isn't a problem under it I try to tell through the cover but sometimes I can't this one no problems looks beautiful and, uh, and I'm really happy with this. So you also need to take the cover off to do your final QC, to, to double check that all your edges look good, to double check that there are no lines and all of that stuff. And this one, 
passed with flying colors. Uh, if I didn't have to do that, I would just ship it with the cover. <laughs> that would be much easier. Anyway, time to get this packaged up and let's get back to what we were doing, taking a look at how those stainless steel guards are looking now. Well, there we go, guys. A little bit of elbow grease required, but it's pretty shiny now. So <laughs> hopefully that'll work. Uh, hopefully the customer is going to be happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe so you can see all the cool guitar projects we have coming out. I'm going to go uh, cut a pick guard out of brass now. So thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you next time.